It seems that the launch of Starship's fifth test flight is not going to take place in the second week of September, as Elon previously predicted, but it's going to get delayed further. Why did I say that? <laughs> All is going to get revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before getting into our main content, we want to let you know, first of all, thank you for supporting our channel over these last few years. We are very close to the 100,000 subscriber mark. And to achieve this, we need your help. So please hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of our amazing content. And it also gives us the motivation to continue creating these videos for you every day. All right, let's continue. A recent surprising piece of info seems to have revealed the most accurate schedule for the upcoming Starship launch. And interestingly, it did not come from SpaceX or the FAA, but from NASA. Can we trust NASA? Sure, many people are going to ask that. However, it must be remembered that NASA is SpaceX's biggest customer, and their major projects depend a lot on Starship. NASA is the organization that needs to feel the urgency and be pushing for this launch. Therefore, there's no reason for them to give us phony info. So it's clear that they've received newly disclosed news from the FAA, as well as SpaceX, that has not yet been made public. On the morning of August 30th, during an online meeting, NASA official Kathy Corner said that the Starship test flight 5 is expected later this fall. In fact, the first day of fall is September 22nd, which means Starship 5 test flight will not happen before September 22nd. This is going to result in a much longer interval between launches 4 and 5 compared to the previously improved intervals. Specifically, if launch 5 takes place in the latter half of September, SpaceX will take nearly 5 months from early June when the 4 Starship launch happened. Quite frankly, taking such a long time is partly due to all those delays in the FAA's licensing processes. Earlier in August, SpaceX announced on X that Starship and Super Heavy were ready to fly, pending regulatory approval. It's unclear why they're taking so long. With previous approvals, I kind of thought that this thing between SpaceX and FAA had gotten better, but appears maybe not so much. Recent incidents have caused a lot of concern. For instance, the explosion of the Falcon 9 rocket booster, we all saw that. Clearly, other space companies losing a booster or having it explode in the air is a pretty common occurrence. But why does the FAA got to conduct an investigation when Falcon 9's booster blows up? Honestly, that doesn't seem to warrant FAA involvement or just an excuse for another government agency to get their hands on SpaceX. Although by August 31st, Falcon 9 resumed launches just two days after the explosion, the FAA's action is really inappropriate. On the other hand, we can't say the FAA is strict with all rockets and spacecraft launches, because Starliner and Boeing had so many problems, yet the FAA didn't investigate or ground them. Not to mention, the troubling flaws of the spacecraft have been discovered since previous tests all the way back to 2019. That's a huge letdown for SpaceX, as time and time again, they've been rigorously investigated by the FAA, but they got no choice but to accept these investigations and just use the waiting time to do more tests. And the wait for the launch license for the fifth Starship launch is no different. Although us space enthusiasts are going to have to wait a longer time, it's worth it for what SpaceX is going to be able to do in this upcoming launch. The booster catching activity is currently the main focus, so recent activities at SpaceX's Starbase are centered on important updates and preparations for this. One of the most notable developments is related to the chopstick catch arms, a crucial component of SpaceX's innovative approach to recovering boosters. These massive mechanical arms are designed to catch the Super Heavy booster mid-air as it returns to Earth after launch, and that eliminates the need for a traditional landing pad and potentially allows for quicker turnaround time between launches. Almost every day over the last few weeks, workers wielding welding guns and torches have climbed into the Starship launch pad in South Texas to make last-minute upgrades. Notably, some details on the arms have been removed, suggesting a shift in SpaceX's strategy or design philosophy. SpaceX removed bumpers and cushions from the arms. These components were originally put on to absorb impact and give a buffer during the booster catch. However, their removal could indicate that SpaceX has developed alternative methods for managing impact forces or has refined the precision of the booster's descent to the point where such cushioning is no longer necessary. This change could also imply a new focus on improving the durability and maintenance of the catch arms by reducing the number of moving parts and potential points of failure. These changes may reflect lessons learned from previous tests or simulations, with the goal of optimizing the catch maneuver or ensuring greater reliability and safety during booster recovery. By removing specific elements, SpaceX might be able to cut the weight of the arms or simplify their operation, and that could enhance the overall efficiency and accuracy of the catch process. It's not yet known if this change could lead to a retest with a B-14.1 test tank, but if SpaceX wants to be even more confident in the operation of the chopsticks after the adjustments, a drop test would not be necessary. On top of that, August 24th, we did see some activity on this test tank. 
possibly equipped with two load points, which further confirms that its mission is not over yet. This indicates SpaceX's intense focus on the mission to catch the Super Heavy booster in this upcoming launch, and that would be a huge step forward if they succeed. But if we have ever wondered why SpaceX doesn't do this with Falcon 9, clearly Falcon 9 has been a successful rocket with landings on drone ships and on land, so catching them would likely be a simpler and safer next step than catching Starship, which we don't know if they can land precisely. Of course there's a reason. Unlike traditional aerospace companies, SpaceX has chosen to develop a new system, the chopstick arms, specifically for the next-gen Starship and Super Heavy booster. This decision aligns with the company's focus on pushing boundaries and adopting new technologies, rather than retrofitting existing systems with incremental changes. By not testing the catching maneuver with Falcon 9, SpaceX has chosen to focus its resources on developing technologies that will be crucial for future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. SpaceX's rapid development and testing approach is characterized by a willingness to take risks and learn from failures. This method is illustrated by their test-fail-fix cycle that allows them to quickly iterate on designs and systems. Instead of spending tons of years on extensive preliminary testing and analysis, SpaceX just moves straight to building prototypes and doing real-world tests. This fast-paced development process allows the company to identify the issues early on, make the quick adjustments, and then accelerate innovation. Central to SpaceX's philosophy is the concept of breaking stuff quickly and then making it better. This means that SpaceX intentionally pushes its hardware and systems to their limits. They expect they even welcome failures as valuable learning opportunities. This approach contrasts sharply with more conservative aerospace practices, where risk mitigation and failure avoidance are often paramount. By embracing a culture of rapid iteration and constantly improving, SpaceX has been able to make quick adjustments, incorporating lessons learned to their next version of their vehicles. This mindset plays a huge role in SpaceX's ability to design cutting-edge technologies and maintain their position as pioneers in the aerospace industry. And Starship is thoroughly applying these philosophies, and the program is on the right track. Catherine Corner, the administrator in charge of NASA's exploration systems development, recently stated that SpaceX has made tremendous progress with Starship in the first four test flights of the program. The next milestone in NASA's $2.9 billion lunar lander contract with SpaceX is for the company to demonstrate that it can transfer cryogenic liquid oxygen and methane propellants between the two starships in orbit. The latest info from NASA indicates that this mission, which requires SpaceX to bring a second launch pad into operation in Texas, is going to happen in the first three months of next year. Corner did not give us an updated timeline in an interview, but does note that there's a lot of hard work to be done before SpaceX is ready for the propellant transfer demo. They have a number of milestones that they have to reach before they can get to the point where they do that, she said. SpaceX is going to need to launch a series of Starship tanker vehicles to fully fuel the lunar lander Starship and LEO before it can go to the moon to meet NASA astronauts, who will then board it to the surface. Earlier this year, a SpaceX official estimated that each Starship lunar landing mission would require about 10 tanker flights over several weeks. The rapid recovery and reuse of boosters and vehicles will make such a high flight rate even more feasible. Therefore, while a few of the upcoming Starship flights aren't part of NASA's lunar lander contract, we can call them supportive elements for the capabilities that NASA needs for its moon missions. This next flight and the next several flights are not contract deliverable milestones for them, Corner said. These are learning milestones for them to do their own development activities. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for checking us out and hope to see you next time. Bye.